Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 27. In the previous lesson, what we did was we took all the code from animation and we combined it uh, with our ant program from earlier. So we got the guy running around on the screen with the ants. And what that looks like is this. So it looked pretty good, but it really wasn't too much new code. You know, we didn't add too much except uh, a few little bits down here. We added this little if statement in our update player and we added this method down here and all those those did was make sure our player stayed on the screen and we did some stuff over here as well we created a player object and we switched some things out uh, but aside from that we really didn't do all anything all that new we just kind of copied and pasted the methods we made in the other program straight over now in this lesson we're not going to do too much new we are going to create a little class at the end or start creating the class that's going to be used as part of the gameplay but we really haven't talked about what the gameplay is going to be right now so what the plan is and it's a pretty simple game is we're going to give our player here a spray bottle of insecticide and when he gets that spray bottle of insecticide he's going to be able to press the space bar and he's going to be able to release a cloud of gas which will stay there for like a second or so and any ants that run into it are going to die and or get injured and if the ants hit him in any way then he's going to lose life now in order to do this we need to one draw a spray can that the guy can run around and pick up uh, two, we need to record information about his life in some way, which we're going to do in a later lesson. Uh, three, we're going to need to create an animation of our guy holding the spray can. And that's actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the guy animated with the spray can so he can run around and, and have that in his hand. Okay, so how would we do that? Well, you, you might have thought of a couple ways. One, you could draw a spray can and then draw it on top of the guy and move it around as he runs. Now, that sounds pretty easy, but actually it's a little bit more work than I would like to do. Uh, I think the easiest way to do it is actually not to draw an individual spray can, except for the one I'm going to put down for him to pick up, but to just redraw the sprite sheet and switch out the sprite sheet based on if he is holding the spray can or not. So it's kind of a work up front as opposed to letting the program work to do some calculations as far as drawing this can or not. And how we're gonna do that is like this. We're gonna take this sprite sheet I've made, which is the exact same sprite sheet for the animation, except I've drawn this little orange can in the guy's hand uh, for each of these directions. I didn't draw it here because it would technically be hidden behind his hand. And I'm sure I could have drawn something on the bottom, but. Let's just put it off to me being a little bit lazy. Uh, we'll still have the cloud of poisonous gas coming up here on top of him. Uh, now, when you run this animation, you're gonna notice it kinda sucks, and I'm sorry, I'm not the best artist, but it is animated, and if you feel like changing it, you wanna make it better, I'm gonna put the Photoshop file and the PNG up on, up on the website, uh, so you can just play with it and get the animation looking a little bit better. All right, but I'm not an artist, so please don't hold it against me. All right, so how are we gonna do this? Well, it's actually almost identical to what we did with the professor, uh, but all I'm gonna do is when it comes down to the draw player, I'm just gonna check if the player has the spray bottle or not. So I'm gonna add another variable in here called has sprayer, and I'm gonna set that uh, has sprayer to be equal to true at first just so we can see it get added uh, The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this sprite sheet I'm going to change it to player sprite sheet and I'm going to add another one called sprayer sprite sheet and Then I'll take this player sprite sheet and I'll switch this out down here. So why am I doing that? Well, I chose kind of a crappy variable earlier uh, if I'm gonna have more than one sprite sheet I should probably you know define which one is which. Okay, so now that I got the player sprite sheet, I'm actually gonna take this sprite sheet and load it in as well. So I do the exact same thing I did before. I just create another variable here. And instead of this one being movement, I'm gonna call this one sprayer. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna 
go ahead and define that as being the exact same size. And then I'm going to create the sprite sheet. And so as you can see, this is really nothing new. And this is called sprayer PNG. And since I've already done this, all this code here for cutting things out, I'm actually just going to take this same thing and I'm just going to put sprayer in here. Since I've already done the work, I might as well okay, might as well copy it in like that. Good. So all this code did was the exact same thing I did with Professor. It just loads this sprite sheet, cuts it all up into little pieces, and stores it into a 2D array. All right. So nothing special at all. Uh, what we have to do with this then is we need to use this has sprayer variable, which right now is set to true, which means he's always going to have the spray bottle in his hand. And we got to figure out in draw player when to draw it and when to not draw it. So to do that, I am going to use my sprayer method in here. I'm going to say if in motion and has sprayer, I will then change this to be sprayer. That means if the character is moving and he has the sprayer, then draw him hold the sprayer. Otherwise, I want down here to draw him with the sprayer standing still. So let's just check if that works. And now you see the guy with the sprayer, and you see him running around, and he's holding the sprayer in his hand. And yes, as you see, I, as I told you, the animation's really kind of crappy. But that's okay, I'm not too worried about it. It's an animation, and so be it. But there's one thing that we need to fix here. And we need to make sure that we can also draw him when he doesn't have the sprayer. And to do that is really just a matter of adding a couple if statements. So I'm going to copy this one here and plug it in. Else if. So what's the else if going to be? Well, the first one is going to be if our player is moving but doesn't have the sprayer. So players in motion, and now this not sign here just says do the opposite of whatever this is. So if he doesn't have the sprayer, meaning if this is false, then I take the opposite of that, which makes it true. And if he's in motion and he does not have the sprayer, then I, instead of using sprayer, I'm going to use movement, which is the array where he doesn't hold the sprayer. And the other one is going to be this. If he is in motion, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. So if he's in motion or not in motion, but has the sprayer, then I'm going to do something else. Okay? So I'm assuming, judging by these if statements, that most of the time he's going to have the sprayer and he's going to be in motion. The second most of the second amount of time he's going to be in motion but not have the sprayer. Otherwise he'll be in motion without the sprayer or just in motion. Now, I should probably actually change these two, but it's all right. These two cases will probably be the least amount of time run. So why am I talking about putting these in any order? Well, Usually when you're doing an if statement, you want the mo thing that's going to occur most as the first check in the if block. That means if the program's running in order to keep things running quickly, just make sure you put the thing that happens the most as your first if, second most as the next if, and so on. That way, if your program is, is going, it doesn't have to do lots of if checks to get to the statement that occurs the most. So you're not like wasting draw cycles or wasting CPU cycles rather. Uh, checking these things. Okay, so let's uh, let's check this. If he's in motion, he's in motion, doesn't have sprayer, so both of these are good. Now if he's in motion, not in motion, and has the sprayer, this is good, but otherwise he is moving, not moving, or he is moving without the sprayer. So what that'll look like is this. Okay, notice now that's good. And if I change this to false 
meaning he doesn't have the spare, and he runs around like normal. Okay, so that's all, all that code did right there. All right, uh, so that's pretty good. There's really not too much more I need to add in here. The player class is looking pretty good. We are gonna add some life and some other stuff. Uh, in the next lesson though, we're actually gonna add the animation for the sprayer. So when I press the space bar, it displays the, the cloud of poisonous gas to kill the ants. And this has just been a really short lesson. Uh, the next lesson is going to take a little bit longer with the animation. So I didn't want to combine them. I just wanted to do this uh, this one just kind of quickly. And next lesson we'll get to some more complicated stuff. All right. Uh, we'll see you next lesson then.